Hey everybody, welcome back to HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com and here on my YouTube channel. And this time out, we're going to do another Fader Port 16 video. I'm going to show you four uh, little tips here to help improve your workflow or speed up your workflow. If you have not seen the other two videos that I've done on the Fader Port 16, click the link in the description box below and go out to the playlist. There's a handful of videos there. Everything from plugging it in, downloading and updating the firmware and getting yourself started. So if you're someone new to a fader port or someone thinking about buying a fader port, those videos will be very helpful to you. Also, if this is your first time here, go out to homerecordingmadeeasy.com. So I want to give you a free mixing course. It is right on the homepage. It's worth a hundred bucks. It's my gift to you just for visiting homerecordingmadeeasy.com. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I'm gonna give you another free gift. So let's head on over here in the Studio One and let's take a look at our fader port, shall we? So the first thing I wanna show you um, is something that I think is really cool. One of the new um, features in Studio One, I think coming with Studio One 4.5 maybe, or version five, where you had these input controls, input gain here at the top of the channel strip. Now, when you open up your mixer, even if you have it closed, you should see it up here above the polarity or the phase flip switch. If you don't see this for some reason, you wanna come over to the wrench on the left-hand side and click, make sure input controls is checked. Okay, because if you take it away and then bring it back, you'll see it. Make sure it's checked, then hit the wrench and you should see that here. So this is really cool because now, let's say on channel one here, if you wanna control the amount of gain coming into the channel because it was recorded too quietly or too hot, you can boost or um, cut the gain. And you would normally take your mouse or your trackball and you would just hover over and you would individually do that like this, or you could do that like that, really cool. But you can also do it from the fader port, so let me show you. So in order to do that, the first thing you wanna do is make sure you're in track mode up here. So you wanna make sure in your, in your fader, top right, um, right hand corner, make sure you're in track mode, okay? You wanna hit the uh, shift key and then the pan key, shift pan. And when you do that, you can't see on the scribble strips because I know it's hard to read in the video, but trust me, it goes into, uh, clip gain mode and then you can use your fader as you can see if I'm moving my fader up and down look at my kick track here See I'm increasing the gain turning the gain down increasing the gain turning the gain down Okay, you can do the same thing with the next track all the tracks now all these faders are not volume anymore, right? They are controlling the input gain so that's really really cool if you wanted to control multiple tracks simultaneously You would simply just hit your select hold you have your shift keys already enabled Select, 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 select. Say that 15 times fast. And then if you turn one fader up and down, you'll see all the faders will move up and down and the clip gain will move along with it. Really cool, real easy way to tweak your clip gain um, without having to uh, do it with the mouse. So that's the first thing. Let's disable that here. Let's go back to track mode and put us back into our regular, we're gonna mix mode here. Second thing I wanna show you is how you can also change any parameter on with the fader port using this parameter button at the top left hand corner by hovering your mouse over a parameter and changing that. So the first thing you want to do is you want to hit the link button here, which is right above the shift key, right? This little white button, boom, light it up. It'll light, looks to be red. And if I hover my mouse over any value here, let's say we're going to go to this kick track and I'm going to hover it over the clip gain. Take my parameter knob, whoops, is that right? Sorry. I don't want to do that. Oh, why isn't that working? That should be working. Let's see, hover mouse link. Is it shift two? No. Oh, what do I got going on here? Oh, hold on here. Sorry. Let me just reset everything. Link, it's blue. There we go. So it was red. I, I didn't have it in track mode. So you always want to make sure you want, I want to make sure you have track pressed, it was lit up, then you hit the link knob and it's blue, <laughs> okay? Then if you hover your mouse over any parameter like I'm doing input gain here, it's changing it. If I wanna do panning, I can hover over the pan and it'll change the pan. See that on my snare bottom track here? If I just hover over there, it'll change that. If I wanna change a fader, not that you'd want to do this, but hover over the fader and I can turn the fader up and down. So this parameter knob, and you see when I turn the fader up and down, you can see the actual fader moving, right? So this is a way, I guess, if you want to work with two hands, one hand on the mouse or your trackball, the other hand on the parameter button, when you're linked in this mode, in track mode, you can do that. You can come over to any parameter and you can change the parameter. So that's kind of a neat way. I think where that might be kind of cool, it's not so much the fader. I like that kind of 
in this mode. So I kind of like doing clip gain again with a knob, not really a fader. Although again, it depends on how you like to work. In the last tip I showed you how you use the shift key with the pan and then you can use the fader to change the input gain. Personally, I you know use both hands at the same time, one hand on the trackball, hit my link key, I can hover right over here and I can just use my parameter knob to change my input gain. It seems to me, for me personally, changing something like a knob, an input gain, is more comfortable for me on, an, on a knob as opposed to a fader. But again, that's just me. And when you do that, because you're, you're in focus mode on tracks, you can still turn up your faders on each track or up or down. Does that make sense? You can still turn your faders up and down on the tracks. You don't lose that ability. When you go to uh, shift pan to change the input gain, like in the last tip I showed you, these faders now aren't the faders for mixing for volume anymore. They turn into the input gain levels, right? Does that make sense? I don't like that personally, but I wanted to show you multiple ways to do it. I like just hovering my mouse, changing it that way. So that's another way you can do that. Turn off the link button, make sure you're back in track mode. And now again, you can mix, you could just keep on mixing. So if you just have to do a quick tweak and then you put your hands right back on the faders and you're back to mixing. The third thing I wanna show you, which is really, really cool, is let's say you have your faders are kind of all over the place here and you're going like this, you're going like this, you're mixing, and let's say you wanna get a fader back to zero. Normally in Studio One, what you can do is you can um, hold your Command key or your Windows key if you're on a PC, Command if you're on a Mac, and if you click the fader, left click the fader, it will snap back to zero. But you can also do this from the fader port and not have to use your keyboard and a mouse, which is really cool. So what you want to do, shift key, and then just lightly touch the fader, right? Or you hold shift. Yeah, hold shift down, lightly touch the fader with your finger, and you'll see it snaps back. See that? Let me do that one more time on these two faders right here. Watch the first two faders, the first three faders on the fader port. If I hold my shift key, and again, I could do it with one hand here, but if I hold my shift key and just lightly touch it, they're touch sensitive, it'll snap back to zero. Pretty cool. So again, I probably wouldn't use two hands and reach across like that. I probably would just do it with one finger. The great thing about having a shift key on either side of the fader port allows you to do everything with one hand. You know, one hand, so I can do this, right? That kind of a thing. And if you wanted to stretch it, oh, thumb. Right, you could do that kind of a thing. So that's pretty cool too, okay? So that's cool, so that's another little tip. Again, to help speed up the workflow, the whole point of the fader ports, I think is yes, to give you that tactile feel when you're mixing, but also to get your hands off the mouse and the keyboard where practical, where you could do everything from the touch of the surface. Again, I don't think this completely eliminates the mouse and keyboard, but I think you can get pretty darn close to the way there. It depends on how you like to work. So the last thing I wanna show you in this particular video is how we assign these user buttons that we talked about here on the right hand side in a video, I think last week's or the week's before's video. Remember I told you that these soft keys are all multi-function. So they, they do what they say on the, on the uh, button itself, but then there's also F functions underneath and those, so they're dual purpose when you use the shift key it'll do a dual purpose. But I wanna show you how you can assign those things to do whatever you want. Out of the box, it already, already come pre-mapped. Let me show you. First thing you wanna do, come up to the top here in the left-hand corner of Studio One. We wanna open up our control here, click on that little triangle, hit fader port 16, and you're gonna get your little mapping box here, okay? So here's all our user buttons on the right-hand side. And you can see that they're already pre-mapped. If I roll my cursor over it, bring it into focus here. The first one, F1 is the inspector. So if I have the shift key and I hit and I hit F1, you'll see the inspector opens and closes on the screen. F2 is the editor. We went through this a couple of weeks ago. F3 is the console. F4 is the browser. Those are practical. I like those. Now, F5 is the scratch pad that we talked about last week. If I don't use the scratch pad, well, what if I wanna make that do something else? I don't really use the scratch pad. I know a lot of you cats do, but I don't use it. So how do we make that do whatever we want? Real simple. Come over here with your mouse, right click on the button, hit unassign, and then you can right click and say assign commands. And then they have a plethora of different things that you can assign. Woo, look at that list. So let's say, for example, I want that to, oh, I don't know, what's a function I do all the time in Studio One? 
I add bus channels all the time. If you've been watching me do any of my mixing or any of those kinds of courses, you know that. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna type the word bus, add bus channel, look at that. Hit okay, now that adds a bus channel. Okay, so what does that do? Well, let's see, if I open up my mixer, I'm gonna do uh, F3, that opens up my console, and now, say right next to my drums, I have all my drums down here, let's say after my room, I wanna add a bus channel. All I gotta do now is make sure that the, the shift key is still lit up. I'm gonna hit F5, which is the master key. Boom, bus channel. That's killer. Now, the only thing I don't like about this is because it's labeled mastered, you have to remember that F5 is for your bus channel. <laughs> Or maybe you write yourself a little cheat sheet and tape it to the top of the fader port. Again, I wish, I wish for the good folks at PreSonus, if you ever build a, you know, Rev 2 of this thing down the road, I would suggest. And it just, and it's not done this way, I'm sure, because the cost of this unit would go up to do it. But let's, let's throw that out the window. Who cares what it costs, right? I would have a bunch of soft keys with either little LCD strips or scribble strips that if I assign that button to um, to add a bus channel, it reads on the button at a bus channel or at bus or something. So I know what that is so I don't have to remember. That means they couldn't be dual function buttons. That means it would have to be separate buttons for each. But as I said, there's a lot of dead metal. That, look at all the metal down here. Look at all the space down here. A lot of wasted space down here. A lot of wasted space. This whole transport section could be moved down here and you could easily put eight more buttons up here, eight or 10 or 12 more buttons. Look at all this dead space. Look at me, I'm a designer now, right? <laughs> I'm a product designer, but, 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 wouldn't that be cool? Then I wouldn't have to remember that F5 is the add bus, but that's how you do it. So let's say, uh, what's this one? Open tempo track. Okay, F6 is open tempo track, which is the click, right? So. Let me get this out of the way. That's kind of cool if you want it to be able to open and close the tempo track, but I don't need it. I don't do that all the time. So if I want to assign it to something else, just right click and just do assign command. You don't have to unassign it like I did last time. And uh, let's see, what else would I want to do there? Um, you can add VCA or um, what about export? Export selection, export export mix down. So say you wanted that to be your export mix down button. Now when I do this, it pops up my export mix down. Killer, 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 killer. This is just like you do when you program macros with the macro toolbar and I have a bunch of those, it's the same thing. So all you're doing on the soft keys is doing the same thing you would do in the macro toolbar but now you don't need your mouse. So. To all my friends at PreSonus and the engineers, when you build another one of these, give us a bunch of extra soft keys that are single function so we can read on them what we programmed them to do. Yeah, go ahead and do that. <laughs> Somehow, some way. Which will mean you'll need LCD screens. You'll need something, you know, maybe there's a way. I'm not an engineer, but I'm just saying that would be really, really cool. Because if these buttons were labeled to what they really did for you, you can have a whole bunch of macros here and you could just go boom, 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 boom with your hand and you can fly around Studio One. And what do I know? Hey, Uncle Dave said that's what he wants. Presonus, make it happen or try to. I'm teasing, I love the guys. Okay, so that's how you program the user buttons down here, okay? Same thing up here. Now up here, you have a foot switch that you can, um, cause you could plug a foot switch into this thing and you can make that foot switch do whatever you want. So say you wanted that foot switch, I don't have a foot switch, but if I right click and say assign command, say this is um, stop, uh, stop playback, uh, what would this be? Yeah, just stop, transport. So say you're playing guitar, you know? This is me playing guitar. And you're recording your guitar part and you wanna be able to start and stop the playback with your foot so you don't have to do it with your hands cause you're playing guitar. You could program a foot switch to, to take over your transport control. Very, very cool. So you could do that with the foot switch as well. Okay, but next to that foot switch uh, up here, you'll see there's three user buttons. That's these three buttons right here. The top, the top level, I only see three user buttons here, but there's six buttons. I, maybe you can't program the top level. The top level is save, undo, redo, which, I don't know why I would ever change that I like that, but the bottom three, which is the automation ones over here, we could program those. 
So again, maybe it's save, undo, redo. Maybe that's where I would put my export. I think I would do that. I would do um, export stems because I do that all the time, even though they're really not stems, they're audio files, but let's not get crazy. All right, so if I have my shift key, you gotta have the shift key, export stems, right? If I want the next one to be, can I drag this? Wouldn't that be cool if I could just drag that assignment? Can't drag that assignment, that's okay. Export stems, export mix down. That would be cool for me. I'm gonna program, customize my student, my fader port. There's my export mix downs. How do I close the window? I think if I do, is it close? No, no, sorry. I thought I can close that window there. Oh, there must be a way. I'll bet you there's a way to close a floating window. Let's try that. How do we do that? Uh, let's just cancel this. What if I want this third button to be close the uh, a, a floating window? Can we do that? I don't know. Let's find out, man. So we're in shift, right? Let's go back to track mode. I don't know if that matters, but we're going to sign. We're going to say close. Close tab, close all. Oh, that's file. Um, what about window? Reset window position, toggle floating windows. I'm not sure what that means. What's toggle floating window mean? I don't know, let's find out. I don't even know what that means. But you get the point, right? You can do, oh, there it is. It opens and closes the window. So that's cool. So if you wanna open and close a plugin window, you can do that. Let me close this. Although I'm gonna show you in the next video how there's another way to open and close plugins. But let's say we have that. Shift, ha ha ha, ha, huh? nice, okay, you get the idea. So that is the way you can program your soft keys to use the most common functions that you use in Studio One. Very, very helpful. It's like having the macro toolbar at your fingertips. You don't need to touch the mouse once they're set up. If we had more soft keys, that would be awesome, as I said already. And maybe we'll see that in version two of this thing, who knows down the road, maybe not, but at least for now, you have a good amount of keys here. So that's another way. So those are four tips for you to kind of help speed up your workflow. In the next video, I'm gonna show you how you can control your plugins from the fader port. So you don't need to do this with a mouse and do this with a mouse, that you can do all of that right from the fader port. That'll be pretty cool, okay? So make sure you check out that playlist and the link, the link in the description box below. Now, you stuck around to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Hope these videos are somewhat entertaining and you're learning something. As I said in the beginning, I want you to go to homerecordingmadeeasy.com. If you've never done that before and you've never been to that website and you wanna learn Studio One from a beginner's perspective and you wanna learn everything about recording, mixing, mastering, EQ compression, blah, 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 blah. I have a ton of training courses on my website that are perfect for beginners and intermediates and I even have some advanced stuff as well. However, on the homepage, when you go to homerecordingmadeeasy.com, I wanna give you a free mixing course. Make sure you get your free mixing course. Take that course, it's absolutely free. If you dig my style of teaching and you find that I resonate and you resonate with me as a teacher student and you wanna check out one of my other paid training courses, I wanna give you 25% discount coupon code. Just use at checkout YouTube 25, that will take 25% off any one of the training courses on my website. All the links will be in the description box below for how you can pick up yourself a fader port, how you can get that discount coupon code and the link to homerecordingmadeeasy.com. Once again, please like, share, subscribe. And until the next video, I've been Dave with homerecordingmadeeasy.com. Thank you so very much for watching and I'll see you guys soon. Take care everybody.